TV KPM. Okey, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Anda bersama dengan saya dalam Road to Success STPM 2020. Alright, uh, sebelum kita nak mulakan uh, kelas pembelajaran kita pada hari ini, jom sama-sama kita patuhi SOP kita dengan memakai face mask. Bila cakap tu kekalkan penjarakan fizikal kita dan ha, jangan lupa untuk kita sentiasa cuci tangan kita untuk terus kita melakukan perkara-perkara yang lain. Baik, hari ini kita dalam subjek fizik. Anda semua mesti nak tahu siapakah guru yang akan bersama dengan kita selepas ini. Jom kita saksikan profil guru kita. Pada hari ini di studio bersama dengan kita teacher para Miss Avari apa khabar teacher fine okay, baik baik uh -huh. uh, seronok dapat jumpa dengan teacher hari ini uh, yeah. topik kita adalah uh, fizik yeah. uh, mungkin teacher boleh cerita sedikit uh, fizik ni sebenarnya kita nak belajar tentang apa uh, pada hari ini uh, teacher okay. Untuk hari ini, kita akan belajar tentang bagaimana cara untuk menjawab soalan pemeriksaan STPM Fizik Term 3. Oh, okay. so, dengan cara ini, pelajar-pelajar akan dapat menghadapi pemeriksaan itu dengan lebih tenang dan bukan saja dengan lebih tenang, mereka lebih confident. Ada tips lah yang Tici akan bagi selepas ini kan? Ya. Yeah, yeah. oh, Okey, sebelum Tici nak bagi tips kepada kita semua, jom Tici kita buat SOP dulu di sana. Yeah, Silakan. Okey, teacher silakan untuk kita pakai dulu hand sanitizer oh. kita sebelum kita buka mask. Ha, teacher dah pakai, saya pula pakai. Alright, bila kita dah cuci tangan kita, barulah kita boleh buka face mask kita, teacher kan? Yeah. Dan paling penting sekali, jangan kita buang merata-rata dan kita masukkan ke dalam plastik yang telah kita bawa. Barulah tidak terkena jangkitan di mana-mana. Okey, teacher ya? Yeah. Ha, bila buka face mask, baru nampak cantik teacher hari ini. Alright. Uh, teacher, uh, berkaitan dengan topik uh, fizik ni sebenarnya uh, senang ke susah, teacher, untuk... Uh, murid-murid skor subjek ni. Okey, untuk murid-murid skor kalau mereka dah mahir untuk menjawab soalan dan mempunyai pengetahuan yang kukuh, mm -hmm. maksudnya mereka dah master the physics concept and also the apa cara untuk menjawab soalan dalam bentuk nombor dan juga simbol ia akan menjadi sangat mudah. Oh, bila ya. teacher cakap sangat mudah tu, oh, bergigil saya rasa eh. Menakutkan. Oh, menakutkan. <laughs> Okey teacher, mungkin ada lah tips yang teacher akan bagi selepas ini untuk nak jadikan fizik ni mudah kan. Okay. Tapi sebelum tu teacher, jom kita saksikan uh, pandangan murid-murid tentang subjek fizik ni teacher. Jom kita saksikan. Okey, jom kita saksikan. Didik TV KPM My favorite subject is physics. Based on my opinion, the easiest topic in the subject is nuclear physics. Meanwhile, the hardest topic in the subject is quantum physics. In my opinion, physics is an interesting subject because it is very challenging. And I found that the question they asked me to describe and explain is more difficult compared to calculation question. This is because explanation and definition is more on memorizing and understanding. Besides that, deriving formula for topic quantum physics is also very complicated. My favorite subject is physics. The easier part of the physics subject is the same two electric current and electromagnetic induction. Meanwhile, the hardest part of the physics subject is same three geometrical optics and wave optics. Physics is one of my favorite subjects, even though physics is one of the hardest subjects to score. In the beginning, physics will be the hardest subject to understand and to study. But once you go into details about physics, physics will be one of the easiest subject to study and it will be the one of the interesting subject to study. Did TV KPM Okey, teacher tadi pandangan murid-murid uh, tentang subjek uh, fizik 
Dalam banyak-banyak uh, topik kita dalam fizik ni teacher, yang mana jadi favorite untuk murid-murid? Uh, kalau dalam kelas ni, kalau subjek tu semua celik mata. Oh, Ada okay. tak teacher? Yang tu ialah bahagian nuclear physics. Okey. Okey, because uh, sangat relevant dengan mereka mm -hmm. kerana tu adalah yang terbaru dan uh, terkini. Walaupun uh, dia dimulakan oleh Einstein yang mm -hmm. umurnya dah sangat tua, tetapi Um, kita masih dalam uh, teori Einstein's theory of physics. Mm -hmm. Jadi biasanya kalau untuk murid-murid ni dia akan score lah dalam uh, dalam bahagian ni kan, teacher kan? Uh, oh, tak tentu juga kan. <laughs> tak okay. tentu juga. Jadi mereka sini, kena betul-betul uh -huh. mahir dalam menangani dan juga memahami konsep fizik itu. Oh, Okey, teacher. Hmm. Bagi memahami konsep tadi, teacher kan, kita akan kembali lagi selepas ini untuk kita bersama dengan murid-murid yang akan menyertai kelas kita pada hari ini. Dan sebenarnya, teacher, hmm. di rumah sana pun ramai murid-murid yang sedang menonton kita. Dah standby dah buku dengan kertas ni, teacher. Bagus. Nak dapatkan ilmu pada hari ini. Tapi kita berehat seketika, kita kembali selepas ini. Road to Success STPM 2020. Kembali selepas ini. Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Okey, kembali dalam Road to Success STPM 2020. Hari ini kita uh, bersama uh, dengan teacher para Mas Vari uh, untuk subjek kita pada hari ini. Uh, sebelum kita uh, nak mulakan uh, subjek kita pada hari ini kepada murid-murid, kekalkan penjarakan fizikal, pakai face mask dan sentiasa cuci tangan anda. Baik, tanpa meninggalkan masa lagi, teacher, uh, ya. teacher boleh memulakan kelas kita hari ini. Silakan, teacher. Thank you, Aiman. Uh -huh. Okay, today I'm going to share with you the uh, techniques of answering STPM Physics Paper 3. So, before going into the paper itself, I have three important information to share with you. Okay, this is my profile. Okay, we go on. Okay, we are looking at the format of the exam paper. If you look at the format of the exam paper, it is same, similar to the paper one and also paper three, mm -hmm. whereby there are three sections in this paper. Section A that has 15 MCQ question, that is a multiple choice question, which carries 15 marks. And section B, it has two compulsory structure question, also carries 15 marks. And section C, that has three essay question, whereby the students are only required to answer two questions. Mm. Therefore, the total mark for this particular paper is 60 marks. And students are only given one and a half hours to complete this paper. Okay? Therefore, Time management is very, very crucial. So why I say time management is very, very crucial? Because the questions are not uh, easily tackled. Okay, so I would suggest to you that you spend 22.5 minutes for section A, 22.5 minutes for section B, and 22.5 minutes for section C for each essay question. Okay, all together you'll have one hour and half uh, sorry, one and a half hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you manage to spend less than the time suggested, mm -hmm. that means you stand a chance, you have the opportunity to recheck your answers. Okay, next, this is the distribution of STPM physics paper question across topic. Okay, if you look here, we have three teams that we cover in semester three. Mm -hmm. They are waves and oscillation, optics, and modern physics, which comprises of three, uh, seven topics. Yeah. Okay, if you look at the distribution of the questions, each and every topic, there are two to three MCQ questions. At the same time, question uh, 16, structure question 16, covers the first three topics, whereas structure question 17 covers the remaining topics. Essay questions, question 18 covers the first theme, that is wave and oscillation. Essay question 19 covers the theme optics. And essay question 20 covers the theme modern physics. So in this case, you do not stand a chance to skip 
any of the topics. Mm -hmm. Next, we go to the level of difficulty. 20% mm -hmm. of the question uh, tests you on lower cognitive level as suggested by Bloom's taxonomy. That is remembering and understanding. But 80% of the questions test you on higher cognitive level. That means the paper is really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, using these three information, how do you prepare for your examination? Mm -hmm. Preparation is very important. Mm -hmm. Firstly, complete revision across all topics, and it must be active revision. Okay. And secondly, practice makes perfect. So familiarize answering all type of solved question for each topic. And I tell you that timing and accuracy is very, very important. If you are fast but not accurate, mm -hmm. that is not good enough. If you are slow but you are accurate, also not good enough. Mm -hmm. So in Form 6 Physics Semester 3 paper, you have to be fast mm -hmm. and you have to be Accurate. Dia kena susun betul-betul masa dia supaya dia sempat untuk menjawab soalan dan jawapan dia betul. Kalau cepat sangat pun nanti salah pula. Ya, yeah, dia akan buat lagi banyak kesalahan. Lagi banyak kesalahan. Baik, uh, teacher. Yeah. Ah, okay. Kita dah ada dah murid-murid ah, yang akan bersama dengan kita dalam kelas kita, kita teacher. Okay. Boleh kita Aiman. bawa mereka masuk? Ya, yeah, okay. persilakan. Silakan. Jemput. Okey, kita ada murid-murid kita. Hai. Hello, I'm Hello. here. Can you see me? <laughs> Okey, kita nak murid-murid kita kenalkan diri dulu boleh teacher? Boleh. Okey, secara ringkas ya, mungkin boleh kenalkan diri sikit. Okey, first dengan Sin Hock. Boleh kenalkan diri? Uh, salam sejahtera. Uh -huh. Nama saya Sin Hock, Eng Sin Hock dari sekolah SMK Taman Tasik. Okey, next uh, Lim. Salam salam sejahtera. Nama saya Lim Yue daripada SMK Taman Tasik. Okey, next. Lau. Selamat sejahtera. Nama saya Lowiti. Okey, okay, silakan. Selamat sejahtera. Nama saya Wong Jin Yang. Uh -huh. Seterusnya. Selamat sejahtera. Nama saya Yang. Okey. Wong Lin Yang. Sudah. Selamat sejahtera. Nama saya Wong Jin Yang. Okey, ni uh, yang ni murid-murid uh, uh, sekolah daripada SMK Taman Tasik Ampang yang akan bersama dalam kelas kita pada hari ini, Teacher. Ya, yeah, okay. sekolah saya juga. Oh, sekolah Teacher. <laughs> yeah. Okey, boleh okay. kita teruskan, Teacher? Ya, yeah, sebelum tu, Teacher, mm -hmm. you are here. Okey, we go on. Uh, this is a typical STPM essay question. Mm -hmm. So, if you look here, the words, question words used here are state, sketch, derive, calculate, determine, determine. When you are looking at the word state, you are actually referring to qualitative type of answers. That means you must have the facts and knowledge within you. Okay. Next, sketch. Sketch is referring to graphical and also diagram. And this is actually visualizing physics concept in terms of diagrams and also graph and finally when you are talking about derive calculate determine determine you are supposed to answer in numerals and also symbols because these are quantitative questions okay now we go on according to laporan peperiksaan stpm physics there are common mistakes made by the students the candidates of STPM Paper 3 repeatedly, and I analyze this personally, okay? And they are found to state principle, law, and theory correctly, but they always end up making mistake, mistake spelling it wrongly, okay? And they also do not, are very poor in answering questions that require them to define what is meant by, right, state, distinguish, differentiate, explain, and describe. Okay, they also commit a lot of com conceptual error. This happens because their understanding is not up to that particular mark. Okay, and common mistake done in the calculative questions are early rounding off of value. Two, final answer is given in fraction and pi. Okay, this actually happened mostly in the first three topics whereby they have to write 
the equation for the um, waves, okay, for the waves, where when they are asked to write or asked to find what is the wave constant, okay, phase constant, when they are asked phase constant, the student, students end up giving the answer in fractions and pi, which is not acceptable, okay, and then they also write their final answer in wrong number of significant figures and wrong conversion of units and incomplete derivation and the common error again on sketching diagram and graph because the candidates fail to visualize in terms of diagram and also graphs. They fail to visualize physics concept in terms of diagram and graphs. Okay, mm -hmm. we go on to do's and don'ts in answering physics STPM paper 3 question. Now, how would students or candidates should answer question that require them to define or state? Okay, let's look at the question here. Define simple harmonic motion. Okay, now I would like to ask my friends out there at home, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Sinhok, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let me phrase it. If you were given mm -hmm. this type of question, mm -hmm. okay, which type of answers that you might give me? I have four options here, but which type of answer do you think you will end up giving me? Mm -hmm. Sinhok? Uh, I will answer as the sample answer one. Okay, if you are answering in sample where answer one, fine. That is the best answer you can give for the word, for the question word define. Okay, because it is in words and sentence. Okay, let's look at 2B where mathematical form is given, but it is not, each and every term in the mathematical form is not explained clearly. Okay, at the same time C, the mathematical form is just put on the paper, okay, but not, ex and the candidate fails to explain each and every term correctly. So therefore, answer 2B and 2C is not acceptable answer. For the question word define, the student should answer in words and sentence or in mathematical form, which each and every term in that particular equation explained very clearly. If you notice here, even the sign negative is being explained. Okay, you must be very careful mm -hmm. in answering this question. Now, let's say I substitute the word define with the word state. Now, state simple harmonic motion. Then how would your answer be, Wadi? Well, I never give you time to think, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Directly, um, the answer. Yes, Wadi? So, um, I think I will, if, if the question asks state, I think I will use word in word form and sentence. Okay. If the answer asks you to state, and your answer is in words and sentences. Mm -hmm. That is the one answer that is acceptable. Okay, so you are correct. But if you didn't give in words and sentence, but you just write it in mathematical form, like in 2A for the question word state, then that answer is not act acceptable. Mm -hmm. So please remember, when you are required to state you must write in words and sentence. Explain. Yes, mm -hmm. words and sentence. If you write in the form of mathematical, that is only added advantage. Mm. But if you just give your answer to A for the question word state, then you do not stand a chance getting that particular mark. Okay, we go on to the next question words. What would you do if you were required to write? Okay, Tishan, can you tell me what would you do if you were required to write an equation? 
if I were required to write an equation, I will go for the sample answer 2. Sample answer 2, because you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes, that okay. is the mistake that most students do. They end up giving the equation because right literally means right, isn't it? Okay, but in physics examination, only you understand all the terms you give in the formula. So you must also explain very clearly, okay? You must also explain very clearly the every, each and every term in that particular equation. Okay, let's say now mm -hmm. I ask you, I substitute the word curvature. If you can see here, R1 is actually the radius of curvature of the front surface receiving the incoming rays. Okay? If I substitute the word curvature with the word lens, what would happen? Jen Yang. I think it gives the different meaning. Yes. So it's wrong. Yes. When it gives a different meaning, conceptually you are wrong. Yeah. Okay? You make a biggest error in physics. Conceptually, you are wrong. We go to the next question. If the question requires you to state the differences of physics concept, how would you answer your question? Okay, let's look at the sample question here. State two differences between progressive and standing wave. Mm -hmm. The word state itself already indicate that you must answer in words and also in sentences, mm. okay? Now, the sample answer given here is in words and sentences. Tell me, comment about it. Ankita? Okay, mm -hmm. Yang, can you comment about the answer in the sample answer? Um, I think I will use the table form. And for the sample answer one, the second is like is like not quite correct. Why? Because it state only one wave. Okay, what wave is that? Uh, progressive. Only talks about progressive wave. Yes, you are right yes. there. If you look there, they wanted two differences. Okay, in the sample answer says wave profile in progressive wave moves. Whereas, wave profile in standing wave does not move. That is point one. The parallel point is given for both the waves. Okay? But point two, it says energy in the progressive wave okay, is transferred in the direction of propagation of the wave. Well, they only address the progressive wave. What is the point for standing wave? So you tend to forget. So when you are asked to give differences, you should address both the physics concepts. Okay, you should address both the physics concepts. So that's why I would suggest you to draw a table so you would not miss out any of the points. Marks are only given when parallel points are given for both the physics concepts. Okay, we go on to the next question. What would you do if you were required to distinguish physics concepts? Okay, now let's look at the question. Here it says, distinguish between intensity of sound and the intensity level of sound. Okay, these are two different physics concepts. How would you distinguish them? Okay, so there are three sample answers. Naturally, naturally, okay? How would your answer be, Tishit? Would your answer look like sample answer one, look like sample answer two, or it would look like sample answer three? Naturally, um, my answer would look like sample answer three. Okay, that is very good. Okay, because if you look at the sample answer three, it clear, it gives the formula, and also it explains the formula in the form of words and sentences. 
Okay, in this case, sample answer three is acceptable, sample answer two is acceptable, but sample answer one here, um, simply putting on the paper, the formulas involved do not distinguish that two physics concepts. Okay, so therefore, sample answer one is not acceptable when you are distinguishing two different physics concepts. Okay, next we go to the question that requires you to explain. Okay, let's look. The mark allotted here is three. So that means you must give at least three points. Okay, so for the question word explain, mm -hmm. you must give the cause, you must give the effect, and you must justify your effect using mathematical form or diagrams. Okay? Let's look at sample answer one. Okay, put up your hands. Mm -hmm. Those who always choose to answer question, this type of question, just like in sample answer one. Put up your hands. Come on, come on. <laughs> I know the way you all answer your questions. Yes, only three mengaku. <laughs> ah. The other three don't want to mengaku. Ah. Okay. Alamak. <laughs> okay, never mind. Yeah. Yes, most candidates end up giving sample answer one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at sample answer one. It says, lambda decreases. X smaller, more dark and bright fringes. Who understands this? Mm -hmm. Only the person writing is the person who will understand this. Explain clearly, okay? Look at sample answer two. When the experiment is carried out in water, the wavelength of lambda of the light beams becomes shorter. This is the cause. Now, based on the formula x equals to lambda d over a, that is the justification where you use mathematical analysis, okay? The fringe with x becomes smaller. Thus, the number of fringes increases. So this is the effect. So remember this. When you are answering the question that requires you to explain, make sure you have the cause, you have the effect, and you must justify your answer, mm -hmm. okay? Can we go to the next question, Aiman? Mm, uh Sebelum kita sambung teacher, oh, uh, yeah. saya nak cuba buat conclusion sikit lah. Teacher sebut tadi yang penting time management-nya, uh, dengan uh, table-nya, mm -hmm. dengan explain-nya. Uh, mm -hmm. Ini tips yang cukup baik uh, teacher berikan untuk kita dapat markah yang baik dalam exam kita kan teacher kan. Yeah. Sebelum kita nak teruskan lagi uh, kelas kita dalam uh, subjek uh, fizik pada hari ini, kita berehat seketika teacher. Yeah. Kita kembali selepas ini, Road to Success STPM 2020. Kembali selepas ini. Didik TV KPM Didik TV KPM Alright, kembali dalam Road to Success STPM 2020. Ha, kita bersama dengan teacher para Ms. Vari dalam hari ini kita uh, cerita tentang uh, fizik, teacher kan? Ha, yeah. Banyaklah kita pelajari. Mungkin kita boleh teruskan lagi, teacher? Ya, yeah, kita teruskan. Oh, okay. okay. Now, we are referring to question that requires you to describe. Okay, in this case, the question says, with the aid of the diagram, the formation of Young's two slit interference fringes described with the aid of the diagram. Of course, you have to have your diagram, and the diagram must be clearly labeled, and you describe the formation of the Young's two slit interference fringes. It's just like telling a story. It's just like telling, I go to market, I buy fish, and I pay the <laughs> fish vendor. Don't say that. I buy fish, I go to market, then only you pay your, uh, what? your fishermonger, right? Okay, so it is just like storytelling. It must have a logical sequence, okay? Next, we go to answering quantitative question. Okay, most of you dread answering quantitative question, mm -hmm. but according to Laporan, uh, San, STPM by MPM, they say that Physics candidates are really poor in answering qualitative question, and they are quite good in answering quantitative question actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am quite surprised also with that particular report. Yeah. Okay, now we look at 
Now we have to call in pizza delivery uncle here <laughs> to help you to answer to answer your calculation type of question. Okay, pizza P stands for physics concept. Mm -hmm. Delivery D stands for draw L scratch. Uncle U stands for unknown and known. Eating E stands for equation. Sate S stands for substitute. <laughs> I am A stands for accuracy. You have to look at the significant figure and also unit. Remember? Mm -hmm. Pizza delivery uncle eating sate ayam. Mm. How do we use that method? Let's look. <laughs> okay, this is the question. The question words that is used is calculate and determine. When they use these two question words, it straight away refers that you have to calculate. You are dealing with numbers now and formulas. Okay, now look at the question. It says, the diagram below shows an object O placed at a distance 20.0 cm from the surface P of a glass sphere of radius 5.0 cm and refractive index 1.63. Okay. Straight away, it should click, oh, pizza, pizza, physics concept in this question is refraction on curved surface. Mm. Okay? Now, next comes the delivery. Draw mm. or sketch. Try to visualize the question in the form of diagram. At the same time, put down the known and unknown. List your known and unknown using the common symbols that you have learned in your physics lessons. Okay, if you look here, these are the known and unknown. You were given 20 centimeter for object distance, 5.0 centimeter for the radius of the curvature, N1 is the refract, uh, sorry, refractive index, N1, 1 for air, and N2, 1.63 for the glass, and the unknown is V. Okay, come up with the equation that has all these known and unknown that you have learned. Okay, you have learned refraction on curved surface equation. So this is the equation. Now sate comes in. Substitute, substitute with the known and unknown here. You get your answer. Check for significant figure and also the unit. Look, significant figure, how do you know? How many significant figures? You must write your answer. Look back to the raw data given in the question. Look at it. Okay, U, three significant figure. R, two significant figure. N1, three significant figure. N2, three significant figure. We, you have to find. That's your unknown. So, look at the least number of significant figure. That is two. So, your answer should only be two. Two significant figure, three significant figure, or four significant figures. Okay? So this is the final answer. Please remember, this is only part one of the question. Look at the part two of the question. Okay? For part two of the question, it says, real image formed asks you to determine the position of the final image formed by the, physic, uh, by the glass sphere. Again, you are using the same physics concept that would be refraction on curved surface. Draw, put down, list down all your symbols with the known and unknown, okay? Look at this part. The other physics concept involved here is the real image is formed in front, becomes the, or by the, sorry again, real image formed by the front surface becomes the virtual object of the hind surface. So you have to calculate your new object distance for the hind surface. So you use back the answer as it is in part one and just plug it in and get your answer. You do not have to increase or change the significant figure from the answer that you bring the answer from the part one. Maintain that same significant figure and get your object distance. And you use the, uh, the rest of the eating sate ayam method. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the answer, calculative question. Next, calculate or determine. This is a multiple concept problem. Okay, here, monochromatic light with wavelength 350 nanometer illuminates the surface of a potassium metal of work function 2.30 electron volt. Calculate the maximum speed of photoelectron emitted. Physics concept, photoelectric effect. Known and unknown, 
that is lambda and also work function and unknown is Vmax. So using the Einstein's equation for photoelectric effect, you, it should click your mind. Hey, it should be E equals to W plus K max. Put it down. But you can see that the equation that you put down do not have any of the symbols that you use for your known and unknown. So you have to relate. Now E here is actually energy of the photon. Energy of the photon is HF, as Einstein already said. Right? So HF is actually equals to HC over lambda. Now you already have your lambda here, which is the known in your known and unknown list. Okay, plug it in in the equation plus W work function given. Okay, and then continue with the K max. How do you relate it to the unknown here? Half mv square. Okay, so now you got two new concept in that particular equation. Plug all the answers in, substitute, and you come to the final answer. Now, I have to uh, make you, uh, point you two important things in this particular question. One is conversion of unit. Your final answer is in meter per second, but the unit that is given for lambda is in nanometer, so you must convert the unit. Okay, meter per second is the SI unit. Electron volt is not an SI unit. So you must convert the electron volt to joule. Okay, that is conversion of unit. Next is the constant value. Look here, in this equation alone, there are almost three constant values. One is Planck constant. Next is the speed of the light. And next you have the mass of the electron. Okay, I know you are too smart. I know you are too smart. When you are practicing, you immediately what? Memorize your calculator value. Constant 6, Planck constant. Constant 23 is the mass of the electron. Well, don't do that. You are given this data. You are given the value of constant. Use them. If no, your answer will be disastrous. In physics, we want to be precise and accurate. Even 0.01 value makes a lot of difference. Okay? Okay, next. What happens if you are asked to derive or deduce? Derive involves symbol. Okay, and sometimes numeral. Again, there are so many, so many, yeah, so many equations in the physics syllabus. So which equation you need to derive? Don't tell me you have to learn to derive each and every equation in the book. No, we do not expect you to do so. Okay, for example, in the chapter quantum physics, I already list out eight important formulas here. Okay, Wadey, look at the slide and tell me how many equations you actually have to derive. Um, I think that there is four we need to derive. Okay, can you number them? Or can you uh, say that? Uh, it starts from five, six, seven, and eight. Yes, okay, yes. Out of these eight equations, you are only required to derive four equations. So learn up how to derive. Prepare yourself to learn to derive and come into the exam hall. Okay, so this is, and when you are deriving, make sure it is complete in logical sequence, and you, and you must give the equation according to, you must give the equation with some explanation, and please use the symbol given in the question. Please use the symbol given in the question. Do not use your own symbol unless you know symbols are given. Okay. Next, this is example of derivation. This is the example of derivation. And we have another last. We have to come to the last few slides. That is on sketching graph and also drawing ray diagram. So in this case, you are asked to draw a ray diagram to locate the position of this box. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the sample answer looks like this. Okay. The sample answer I took 
from a book. It looks like this. Now, can you comment on this sample answer, Jen Yang? I think there's no error on the label line. There is no error. What? No error? Error. No error at a all? Error. Error. Arrow, yes, this is not a ray diagram unless these lines carry arrows. There must be arrows to indicate that this is ray, ray lines. So for ray diagram, you must make sure you draw the line with arrows. Okay, next we go to sketching graph. Sketch and label a typical X ray spectra. Okay, you know for X ray spectra, there is a curve for continuous spectra, and there is pointed line that is characteristic spectra. Now, in these two samples, you can see this has a curve and also pointed line. This also has a curve with pointed line. Lambda minimum is also indicated. Lambda minimum is also indicated. And x-axis is labeled. Y-axis is also labeled. OK? Now, I would like to ask someone, what is the problem with these two graphs? Sinhok? Ankita? Um, Ken? Ankita? The first graph is not labeled for the line spectrum, for the continuous spectrum. Oh, OK. First one, they just wrote. Uh, K, beta, and also K alpha. Yes, it is not given in the question. Therefore, this is not acceptable. Only sample answer 2 is acceptable. And the zero mark is not necessary here because y axis only represents intensity. But if it represents relative intensity, you have to put the zero mark there. OK, so with that, mm -hmm. okay. we have actually finished okay. our session. Uh, uh, okay, can uh, we try uh, to some ask other questions. Uh, some other question to students? Okay, good. Okay, now listen very carefully. Are you all listening? Yes? Okay, now I would like to ask you, how would you answer a question that asks you to determine the type of lens? How would you answer a question that asks you to determine the type of Less. Mm -hmm. Three marks for that question. Who would like to answer? Yes, UA. Uh, most likely, I will use calculation to determine the answer, to okay. determine the type of the lens. The type of the lens. So that means the type yes. of the lens will be your conclusion. Yes. And the calculation will be your justification right exactly. justification yeah. why you came to that conclusion right yes that yes. is how you should answer because the question word there is determine mm -hmm. okay so okay any question are you any to other ask question teacher? you would like to <laughs> ask me okay okay i would like to talk about electron word maybe can you use it as your final answer OK, for energy level in nuclear physics, OK, the difference in energy level for nuclear physics, you can give your answers in electron volt and also in joule. Both are acceptable. OK, both are acceptable. Mm -hmm. okay, OK, any question from student to teacher? Uh, ada soalan tak yang nak ditanyakan kepada teacher? Uh, sebab kita ada peluang ni nak bertanya kepada teacher. Uh, any question yang kita belajar daripada awal tadi, uh, berkaitan dengan uh, time managementnya, buat table, but how to explain uh, dan sebagainya ada tak apa-apa uh, soalan yang nak tanya kepada teacher? Uh, okay, uh, kalau tak ada nanti teacher pula tanya kepada murid-murid uh, kita kan? Uh, no question. Okay, uh, kalau jual tak nak tanya tak pula saya tanya lah teacher. Eh? Okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay, any tips uh, to score the subject teacher? Oh. There is no shortcut to mm. success. So right. therefore, they have to work very hard. Mm -hmm. They have to practice all type of question, whether it is MCQ question, structure question, or essay question. When mm. you already know the long way, then only you can find the shortcuts, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You all know all the ways to approach the question. 
then only you will know which shortcut you should take. So you have to work very, very mm -hmm, hard. Mm -hmm. There's no avenue for you to sit back and shake your mm. leg. Okay, teacher. Uh, any advice uh, for them uh, before they sit for the examination? Any okay. advice? Uh, please practice all types of questions, as I said. Please do revision across all topics. Okay, all topics. Mm -hmm. And uh, please also pray hard. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my blessing will be with all the candidates <laughs> who are sitting for STPM Paper 3. 2020. Okay, all the students, can we say a thank you to the teacher? Thank you, teacher. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you teacher. Thank you. thank you, teacher. Okay, thank, thank you. you for the all students and thank you also to uh, teacher Para Mesbari uh, untuk uh, subjek kita hari ini, fizik. Uh, okay, kita dah berada di akhir rancangan. Thank you very much. Thank you, and, and Aiman. Uh, ada sikit kita jumpa lagi. Uh, Road to Success, STPM 2020. Okay, bye. Thank you, teacher. Okay, you're welcome. Dede TV KPM. Saya berharap dengan bantuan cikgu dan persediaan mereka untuk menghadapi STPM. Mereka dapat melakukan yang terbaik dalam peperiksaan ini. Terima kasih cikgu atas mendidik anak-anak saya dan Semoga keputusan mereka akan semerlang. Year 2020 STPM candidate. My son did quite well in his previous semesters and my hope is he will give all his best in this semester to improve his CGPA. All the best and good luck to Tishan and for all those who are taking the third semester papers. Thank you. All the best.